Hello everyone. So welcome to the lecture series on PDEs. So in today's today will be a short video because this is the thing which I'm going to use a lot in my next couple of videos. So today we are going to discuss about steady state solution. So when you call a solution to be a steady state, so a solution is said to be steady state if uh, your solution does not depend on time. That means the solution is time independent. So you keep on changing the time that will not affect the solution. That's what you mean. We call a state solution to be a steady state solution. That means what theoretically you write in this way. So like if you recall our solutions in uh, type one or type two or type three, the solution involves what it involves e raised to minus t square something into t. So that means all those solutions depends on time. And as my t goes to infinity, those solutions approaches to zero. And that's how the temperature work, right? I mean, heat works as the time increases the temperature keeps on decreasing so those where what such a solution is called as a transient solution the solution which depends on time that is called as a transient solution and which is independent of time it is called as a steady state solution so today we are going to derive a formula uh, for a steady state solution so suppose you have a heat equation of a, you have a rod or a wire of length l and initially the temperature is t1 and at the end the temperature is t2 then what is u of x you can write u of x comma t as well, but I'm writing u of x because my solution is independent of time. So if that is the scenario, then how your u of x will look like. Some authors also use the notation us of x because it's a steady state solution. So this is also one of the notation you might come across. Okay, so now let's derive the solution. So it's easy now. What is do I have? I have a steady state solution, right? That means what? My temperature is what? It's independent of time. That means what? Dabber by dabber t will be zero because it is not depending on time. So my dabber by dabber t is zero. So if I divide by c square, that also becomes zero. So what do I have? That is u x x equal to zero, right? Because this part is zero. So u x x is zero. Or you can also write this as d to u upon d x square is zero. Why I'm bringing it? Why I'm bringing ordinary derivatives? These are called as ordinary derivatives. Please see my first lecture on PDEs. So these are called as ordinary derivatives because my u is what? It's only a function of x now, right? Because it is independent of time. So t variable is not in the picture. So my u is, you can say, it's only a function of x. So it's only one independent variable. So therefore, I can talk about the. That's why I'm writing this notation, ordinary derivatives. Okay. Now, if this is the scenario, what is my u of x? If I integrate twice, what do I get? I get ax plus b. Okay, so once I have ax plus b, now let's try to find a and b. So what is given to me? Initially, what is u of 0 at left hand point? The temperature is t1. So t1 equal to u of 0 equal to a into 0 plus b. So this implies my b is nothing but t1. The left hand rod, the temperature at the left hand rod. What is my t2? t2 is nothing but u of l, which is nothing but a into l plus b. So this implies, what is my b? So t2 equal to a into l plus t1. So what is my a? a is nothing but t2 minus t1 upon l. So these are what my constants are and therefore, what is your u of x? The temperature is nothing but t2 minus t1 upon l into x plus t1. So once you know the temperature at the end points, then you can tell me the temperature at any point provided the situation is which is independent of time so as you keep on changing your x so if this is the rod as you keep your position changing as you can see if again if i'm at zero when my x is zero what i get t1 and if my x is l if my x is l l l goes away t1 t1 goes away only t2 so i'm getting t1 and t2 which is correct thing and as you move away you get different different you take different different x you get different different temperatures so this is how your steady state solution looks like and if you want to take one small example so suppose if you take this as your example so your c is 1 you have a rod of length l in the left hand point the temperature is 10 degrees celsius or fahrenheit and the right hand side is 50 degree the question is what is the solution so what is my u of x if i use this formula so what is my u of x it is t2 minus t1 upon l into x plus t1 and if i put the value what is t2 minus t1 40x upon l plus 
50. So this is what my temperature is. Suppose L is also given to you. Suppose the length of the rod is 10. 10 units. So what is my U of X? It will be 4X plus 50. So this is how a steady state solution will look like. So I hope steady state solution is clear. In the next lecture, I'll be using this formula directly to find the steady state solution. So I hope this is clear. If you have any issues or concerns, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you.